first thing I want to talk about are your settings. These are the things that are found in the control panel um, in the user interface or the UI in your game. The first of these options that I want to talk about are your game options. These are found in the user interface and they look like two little gears kind of sitting next to each other. So first you want to have your view distance extra large. This will show your neighborhood and all of that. You want neighbors on, decorations on, and your fade distance you want to have turned off. Next you want to make sure that you have free will turned off. You don't want your sim doing something really stupid while you're not looking and trust me they will. So just make sure that you have that turned off. Next we're going to handle the graphics options. These are found in the control panel and it looks like a little computer monitor. Okay, so this is going to control all of your graphics options. A lot of these settings are going to depend on how fast your computer is, but typically what I do is I keep my shadows at medium, lighting high, graphic effects high, the sim and object detail must be set at high, and the texture detail must be set at high, otherwise you get some really low quality looking things and you get stuff like your sim's hands looking like mittens. Um, you also want to keep your reflections on unless of course you're filming some kind of a vampire storyline and in which case having reflections turned off might be a little bit useful. In order to use this setting you actually have to edit one of the config files in the game. I've included a link to a really great tutorial that shows you how to do that. The last of your options are your camera options. These are found in the control panel and the little icon looks like a little camera. It's pretty easy to find. So, You want your picture-in-picture -picture event camera and neighborhood camera drift disabled. These are really kind of useless when it comes to movie making unless you want that cinematic feel. Video capture size and quality should be set as high as your computer can handle. Don't bother filming high and compressed because the files are just way too large and it's just not worth it. The last two things to cover here in the settings are your sound capture and your recording time. Turn the sound capture off. It actually causes um, a lot of problems when um, you're filming and the clip is actually rendering. Um, so just turn it off unless you plan on using the sounds from the game. The other thing is you want to turn your recording time. You want to change the number to 500 seconds. This is more than adequate to capture anything in one shot, but this way you just make sure that your camera won't shut itself off while you're in the middle of recording. Now we'll move on to some of the more functional things. First thing you want to take care of is that ugly plumb bob thing above his head. So we're going to type in plumb bob toggle off and that'll get rid of that little green thing above his head. Okay, so next we want to make sure that our walls are up. So we're going to film with the walls up. You don't want to be seeing what's behind, you know, all the rooms and all of that. So I'll show it to you inside too. Here you can see the bathroom. We don't really want to see that. And in a second when I rotate the view, you'll be able to see some of the other rooms as well. So just to show you, we're going to put the walls up so that you don't see them anymore. Okay, so here we go. Put the, the walls up. And next I'll show you the ceiling tiles, which I will also post a link for so you can download them yourself. Okay. So next what we're going to do is I'm going to direct my sim to go and sit in that chair there and one of the things that you'll notice is that as he starts to sit down the camera starts to follow him and the way you do that is you just right click on the sim's little icon there in the little user interface or the UI and the camera will follow the sim. And this can be quite useful if you want to track a sim's movements while you're filming and um, you know, follow them from room to room, which I'm going to show you in just a second. He's going to get up and he's going to walk into the kitchen and you're going to see how the camera follows the sim. Now, when normally when I film, I film and type in, in the cheat thing, slow motion 10. And this is so that as the, um, as you're filming, it actually allows the game to render the uh, clip a little bit more completely. So um, anytime that you're filming anything with any kind of move movement, use slow motion 10. To bring the game back to normal speed, you just type in slow motion zero. Okay, so here's a little boo-boo I discovered. That's the little burglar alarm thing hidden behind the counter there. Okay, so what I did to move the camera from where we were to where we are now 
is I used the control key and the number four. You can use the control key and the numbers four through nine to save your camera positions. I typically save control nine for my hacked objects. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some of the hacks that I use. These are essential to any movie maker and I've included links to all this stuff so that you can go and download it for yourself. So what we have here are some talk overlay hacks, some action hacks, and some animation hacks. And these, of course, are very useful for um, facial expressions, getting your sense to talk when you want them to, and many other things. So there are those. Going back to saving your camera positions, you have to um, use this both in live mode and in freeform or cameraman mode. You can access cameraman mode by hitting the tab key on your keyboard. Now what I've done is I used control 4 and control 5 to pinpoint two different points on this lot and now I'm using the camera to move back and forth between them. So I have actually altered my um, video capture settings and like I said before I've included a link for that tutorial so that you can learn how to do this. Now my camera moves pretty slowly but you can change that so your camera moves as fast or as slow as you want. Um, this also is great for getting those really fluid, uh, you know, camera movements. Now while you're in cameraman mode, you can use the Q button to lower the camera, the E button to raise the camera, the Z button to zoom, and the X button to move away. You can use the arrow buttons to move left, right, forward, and backward as well. Next I want to show you some of the things you can do with the move objects on cheat. As you can see here, I've used it to move the mailbox, the trash can, and to place tiles outside of the grid. If you look at the driveway there, you can see that I've placed tiles where you normally can't place them. Using the move objects on cheat will allow you to do this. Using alt and tab to minimize your game while you're filming can actually be quite useful. Um, as you can see here, I keep my movie files or my movie folder open when I'm filming. This way if I make a mistake and I want to go back and I want to re-record something, I can easily access the file that I just messed up on and I can just delete it and then re-record the scene all over again so that I don't have all those outtakes. The last thing I want to show you guys is an example of a lot that I use. This is a pretty small lot. It was either built on a 2x2 or a 2x3 lot. I recommend keeping your lots small and functional. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. One, it will cut down on the amount of lag that you experience and um, I'm also just showing you right now some of the other scenery around the neighborhood. But anyway, so you want to keep the lag down as much as possible. It's very frustrating when you're trying to create movies when you have a lot of lag. So keeping your lots small will help with that problem. Thanks for watching this little tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you can think of anything that I left out, please feel free to post a video response.